What is the real king? What is the real king? Is it a person or is it a thing? I think it's wisdom, right? I always think wisdom is the highest uh, achievement, highest attainment, the highest level, <clears throat> the highest realization. Because really, it's only wisdom that helps us to, uh, to understand things, to penetrate things. But to get there is the difficult part, <clears throat> at least for me. Uh, don't know about you, but uh, wisdom itself is a very, uh, <clears throat> it's very concealed in the beginning. Because to gain wisdom requires many things. It requires many things. You might think, no, it doesn't. Well, I think it does. Because even when you're learning something, how many times you've got to trip, your, trip over and fall down before you get good at something, right? Because until you penetrate the knowledge of something for anything at all, like a craft, an art, uh, a, a trade, a profession, uh, whatever, a sport, whatever, whatever it is that you do, right? In the beginning, uh, you know, it's all new. And so there's a lot of things that we have to learn. And someone who's practiced something for many years understands how naive they were at the beginning because you couldn't see the whole picture. And when you get to a certain point, you realize you, You'll never see the whole picture. You can only see what you can see at that point in time. And this is why people make mistakes. That's why part of the human condition is making mistakes. That's why we're not machines in that sense. Um, and we're fallible in a lot of ways. We, we lack foresight in, in things, even with a lot of experience, We've, even with a lot of knowledge, even with a lot of wisdom. But the difference here there's knowledge, but there's also wisdom. Wisdom helps you adapt. It helps you change the gears. It helps you penetrate things and see their very essence. And wisdom, in, wisdom, of course, even in the uh, psychic realm, in what we call the abhinyas or the psychic attainments, wisdom is the sixth, it's the highest uh, achievement. It's the highest realization uh, beyond, beyond the psychic attainments. So if you're attached to the psychic attainments or they interest you, I ask you to consider that wisdom is higher than that, right? Because psychic attainments can only take you so far, but wisdom is the highest psychic attainment. And this is evident um, with, uh, with uh, the, the teachings of, of the Buddha. The Buddha praises wisdom, um, praises uh, Venerable Sariputta. And I'm not saying Venerable Venerable Mahamogalana didn't have wisdom and all the other hunts didn't have wisdom. But eventually, what I'm saying is even Venerable Mahamogalana, even after all the psychic attainments, in the end, the last seven days, uh, he lost uh, the psychic attainments. And lucky for him, he developed wisdom, right? Uh, wisdom helped Angul, Venerable Angulimala attain, um, attain uh, cessation of dukkha, nirodo, right? So wisdom is very important here. But wisdom is also important with your communication with the world, with your actions with the world. Um, it helps you uh, change gears. It helps you be flexible. It helps you navigate better if you have wisdom, which is a faculty within us that is beyond the intellectual faculties, beyond the critical faculty. It's beyond the thinking faculty. But it's there. <clears throat> the Buddha said so. <laughs> so it's there. And... It's uh, something that I think is not talked enough, talked about enough. It's not taught enough. It's not practiced enough. Because in our societies, we do a lot of reading. We do a lot of study. We try to go for knowledge. And knowledge is important. But knowledge without wisdom is dangerous. And we're seeing this more and more. We're seeing this more and more. Right? Because knowledge can... Be, can, can if a, if a person has a treacherous mind or a person uh, is bent towards evil, uh, having knowledge is actually worse. It makes it, that person even more dangerous. It's no difference. This can obviously be seen from the knowledge a murderer might, might have of certain weapons, right? As opposed to someone who's defending the country and a good soldier 
who only uses the weapon when needed. And I'm not condoning, <clears throat> I'm not saying killing or anything. Don't mistake what I'm saying. This is just like a metaphor in the sense that that there's a difference between someone who's using knowledge for good and someone who's using knowledge for bad, right? It's like using a knife. A knife can do many good things, but it can also do a lot of evil. Uh, but it's not the knife doing that, right? Knowledge is like the knife, right? You can use it to cut and create good things, or you can use it to destroy, right? Now, this is where wisdom comes in. Wisdom allows you to use all your tools more effectively. And how is wisdom obtained? Well, first it comes from the sati, the sati, right? From being aware enough, talked on sati. I did quite a deep video on this and being aware of what, and, and understanding what the human apparatus is, what the actual human experience is, knowing things as they are, right? And developing solid concentration, whether it's samatha, whether it's vipassana, whether it's both, or getting to that point of emptiness or even um, entering the silent mind, or for those who want to talk technically, entering jhanas. But ju just entering jhana and, and just meditating without sati and without all the other factors is not going to lead to wisdom. Right? It, what we're trying to do is develop mahasati or mahasamadhi, or great awareness and great concentration, right? which, which opens the door to wisdom. So in other words, wisdom is not something that can just be attained at the uh, flick of a switch or that easily. And it's something that we ought to strive for more and more because I, I really, um, from my practice, I've seen that the intellectual faculty is very, very powerful. So is the critical faculty, the fact of always criticizing others or criticizing and complaining or being very intellectual about something and not, and not penetrating through it, going to the other side, going beyond compromising ourselves, compromising the knowledge and not really understanding, just only going a certain distance and not going beyond, not going further, not going further. And ultimately getting to the point where the citta actually is released, the mind is, the, the ignorance is completely destroyed, right? And only the truth remains, only the Dharma remains inside us. <clears throat> now whether that's citta or not, well, that's another thing, but that's hard to know. <clears throat> However, what we do know is Dharma does exist. And uh, <clears throat> the Buddha said, when you see the Dharma, you see the Buddha. When you see the Buddha, you see the Dharma. So obviously, uh, someone who's uh, penetrated Dharma is not very different to this, right? So the Dharma is what we're trying to penetrate, <clears throat> where it's just pure Dharma. It's not self. There's no identity anymore. The, the, the human being the human being, the human apparatus just follows its natural, uh, I guess, entropy where it just passes away. But the Dharma keeps going on <clears throat> inside us, which is our true nature. And that's what we're trying to get to here in this practice. So this is what I suggest is that <clears throat> you never lose sight. You never lose sight of what is king, of what the focus is and what we're trying to um, do here what you're setting out to do here and that's you're trying to empower yourself to your maximum capability right that's what we're trying to do here and that's why I think it's always important to do a reassessment daily of what your focus is that day what you're setting out to achieve on a daily basis what's really important after I just listened to a uh, Dharma talk by Longtan Mahabua uh, he stressed that daily progress is crucial, daily progress. So that's something that I ask you to reflect on every day is, was there progress in my practice today? Or, or did I practice today? Now practice means, was, was I attentive? Was my sati switched on? Did I sit down and concentrate for a period of time? Were my actions all uh, wholesome and correct in line with Dharma? Was my speech correct? Was my livelihood correct? Was my, uh, are my views in line uh, with Dharma? Are my, are my views correct? Right? Is my, uh, is my, is, is my resolve correct? <clears throat> am I, am I um, doing no harm? 
Am I refusing to engage in evil? Am I following the moral precepts? So there's a lot here to unpack. The practice is quite full. Now, were my efforts correct today? Did I really strive and push it, push it beyond today? Did I really go uh, beyond the, you know, the just the base level? Did I do more today? And these are reflections that need to be done daily. This daily progress is what's going to take you to a better tomorrow, or a better plot, or, or I guess realization, and help you develop that wisdom. Because wisdom ultimately is the key that unlocks all the ignorance. It, it shatters all the ignorance and all the bounds and all this enslavement that we're under, under ignorance and not knowing and how the world operates. Um, wisdom helps you navigate that through all this. Um, I guess. Uh, I guess better can't find a better word right now but it helps you navigate navigate through the world not only better but it helps you navigate <clears throat> and do what is correct in all situations even if you don't know the fact that you're not engaging because wisdom and doing no harm go hand in hand right? when someone is has pure metta goodwill in in their heart pure compassion in their heart, pure joy in their heart, pure equanimity in the heart. See, doing no harm and, and, and doing what's wholesome is, is just natural to someone who's developed full wisdom capability. Right? So this is why it's important for you and for others that you, yourself, develop wisdom in its full capability and hopefully one day realize the cessation of dukkha, nirodo.